Late in the year, they were in the World Series. They got less rest and more innings than any other team. Now they get a few extra months off. I think Steven Strasburg is a true ace. And he showed it last year. And I think with the time off, Strasburg ranks right up there with the game's best. If you take a look at Strasburg, over the last half, over the last quarter of the season, it was like he found it. You Not that he didn't know it, but he's going to be 30 years old. He set personal best last year with 18 wins, 251 strikeouts. I know he led the National League in innings with 209. But he avoided the injury list for the first time since 2014. And he, he was a top 10 fantasy starter across the board. In the Grapefruit League, during spring training, put up great numbers. And with the rest, he and Max Scherzer truly benefit. Corbin in that rotation. Joe Ross probably in the rotation. And when you look at the bullpen, they add Will Harris. Daniel Hudson will probably close. Do little. It's a good bullpen. We know they lost Rendon. And Rendon could well be the most valuable player any year. Going over to... The American League, we talked about the Angels yesterday because they're in the Cactus League. But going over to the American League, he could easily drive in 120, 130 in that Angels lineup. Protecting Trout, are you kidding me? So the Nationals lose that bat, and they now have to find someone to put in the top of the order. And the heir apparent, according to manager Davey Martinez, is Castro. Their second baseman. Starling Castro last year for the Marlins hit 270 with 22 homers and 86 RBIs. Starling Castro will open the year as the number three hitter. And Starling Castro is not an old player. We think of him as being around for a long time, right? He came up, he was a cub. He spent some time with the Yankees. He's now spent some time with the Marlins. So how old is Starling Castro? Well, he was born in 1990. So he's just turned 30. That's right. He's just 30 years old. And he's going to be batting behind Trey Turner and in front of Juan Soto. I think Starling Castro is not only in a position to have a great fantasy year, I think he could put up career best numbers. And if you look at his ADP, my question is, with him being second base, third base eligible, batting third in this order, why in the world is Castro being drafted around 200? I mean, He probably, George, you're right. I think Starling Castro has had a sneaky, underrated, under-the-radar career. He's 30 years old. He can hit 20 to 25 homers. He can drive in 100 runs. He's going to hit for a good average. And he's drafted around 200. Are you kidding me? The Nationals should be... They got some question marks. So, Carter Kaboom, he is slated to be the everyday third baseman. He came up for a cup of coffee last year. First at bat, wow. Second and every at bat after that, strikeout. Did you see his numbers? He hit 128, sent back down to the minors. He hit 377. Overall, he hit 289 in the minors last year. Projected to be the opening day third baseman, he's 22 years old. There's a question mark, no doubt about it. You got his dribble Cabrera who can play there, 
if Kaboom doesn't work out. Remember, the Nationals started the year last year 19 and 31, and then they turned it around. If they start slow, the difference in this year and last year is if you start slow, then you don't have the same number of games probably to catch it up. So, that's the East. I think the Nationals and Astros and Mets battle it out in that division Oh, I love this realignment. I really do. I think with what has happened, this adds some additional interest and intrigue. So let's go to the South. And if you think the East is loaded, well, so is the South. You've got the Red Sox. You've got the Twins. You've got the Braves. You've got the Rays. And you've got the Orioles. Are you kidding me? The Rays, Braves, Twins, and even the Red Sox. I mean, if you look at the division based on projection of wins, you got the Orioles coming in fifth, the Red Sox coming in fourth. When has that happened lately? And you got the Rays, Braves, and Twins. Okay, so we know the Twins are moving Sano to first base. We know they added Rich Hill, and this is a key piece of the puzzle, I think, for the Twins. They add Rich Hill from free agency, who's originally supposed to start the year on the injured list, but now with the delay, you may get Rich Hill, blisters and all, for the rest of the season, the entire season, whatever that is, and Rich Hill is still an effective pitcher, and he's a lefty put on that twin staff. I think the twins with the realignment, I I think, you know, I don't think it benefits them because I think where they were, they were probably the overall favorite to win the American League Central. But now they're in a division with Tampa, with Atlanta, with Boston. They could finish anywhere from first to fourth. Any of these teams could. The Rays. Prime to... In recent weeks with the injuries to the Yankees, a lot of people were talking about... Rich Hill's 120 years old. He can still throw that curveball, buddy. Rich Hill's curveball is still one of the best in the game. And he's not pitching into thin air in Phoenix. Hey... Baseball's a roll of the dice. We know that. But the Rays, they come into the season, pitching staff intact, three of the best in the game. I mean, when you've got Charlie Morton, Tyler Glass now, and Blake Snell. Now, I know Snell has real concerns with the elbow. And that is a to-be-seen situation. But the time off has certainly got to help Blake Snell. They add Jose Martinez as a DH, who I think can put up some mega numbers this year in Tampa. They return Brandon Lau for his sophomore season. And they also go overseas. Now, Tampa, very judicious, if you will, with their spending. And they go out to add to the Austin Meadows. They add Yoshitami Tosigo, who can play outfield, who can play third base. And Kevin Cash apparently is very high on this young player. So... More time to get adjusted to the United States. More time to get adjusted, period. The Rays are going to be an interesting team in any division. I think they win this division. I think the team that comes in second is the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta. Now, Freddie Freeman and his elbow. I can't say his name. 
Come on, chappy. That's for you to do at seven o'clock tonight. Let's just say the Rays have a Japanese import who can really make a difference. The Braves in that division, we know they add Marcelo Zuna. A great pickup. We know Austin Riley is primed now to have every opportunity to start at third base. We know also that Freddie Freeman was having problems with that elbow. And I think the Braves' chances could well hinge on that elbow. If Freddie Freeman is healthy, there's no better first baseman in the game. If he's having trouble with that elbow... It could be a disappointing year. We know the great Acuna. We know Ozzy Albies. They go and sign Travis Darno to be their catcher. Great move. Marcakis is back for his, what, 48th season? Something like that. From a pitching perspective, Soroka. Mike Soroka. Then you got Freed. Fulte expected a big comeback. At least I am. Every bit of talent, he just can't seem to put it together. Will Cole Hamels now be ready with the time off with the sore shoulder? They've got Sean Newcomb. They've got a good bullpen. This Braves team is going to be an exciting group to watch. What a division. But I'm going Tampa to win the division. Atlanta second. Minnesota third. Boston 4th, and the Orioles 5th. So let's close the show today by looking at the North. And of the divisions we've looked at today, this is a very top-heavy, bottom-heavy division. The Yankees, the Phillies, the Blue Jays, the Tigers, and the Pirates. Now, I know this is based on geographics. But I just know there are some Yankee haters out there saying that the Yankees had everything to do with this realignment. I mean, the Yankees go from the American League East to play in the division with the Phillies, the Blue Jays, the Tigers, and the Pirates. Okay, so they played in the division with the Blue Jays anyway. So they swap out the Phillies for the Rays. I'll take that. And they add Detroit and Pittsburgh. Are you freaking kidding me? The Yankees should run away with this one. Might even go through the Yankee team. I mean, we know who they have. We know the injuries to Judge and to Stanton, and we read and all we read now is that Judge is progressing, Stanton is healed, and so now we wait to see when the season starts. The Yankees should be healthy. They should also have Paxton back for a full load. The Phillies, the interesting thing about the Phillies, now Girardi, managing the Phillies, is in a division with his former team, the Yankees. The Phillies, interesting. I've heard Lenny talk about their pitching, particularly one pitcher more than others. And I'm going to do the same. But they go off in the offseason and they sign Zach Wheeler. And Lenny Melnick is very high on Zach Wheeler. And there's a reason why they call Lenny the legend. So with his promotion of Zach Wheeler, let's take it as true. Let's take it that Zach Wheeler is going to have a great year to go with Aaron Nola. Will Arietta bounce back? But i tell you who I really like in this staff, who I think is probably their third best pitcher right now, is Spencer Howard. Great arm. This shortened season, again, Lenny mentioned it this morning, could lead to Howard opening the year in the big league rotation. They are looking to cap him at around 130 innings. That now should take care of itself. Vince Velasquez and Nick Pavetta have been given every chance, and they just will not or have not seized the opportunity. Howard has a 98 to 99 mile per hour fastball. I think he's in the rotation. And I think he produces in a big way for the Philadelphia Phillies. And when you look at their lineup, now they've moved Segura over to third. 